It's been a long journey and a wonderful journey, and photography has been one of the shining lights in my life, along with my children and my family. My name is Lenny Rumpler, and I'm a lifelong photographer. I've been taking pictures ever since I was a little boy, probably around eight years old, nine years old, ten years old, and my mother and father bought me a Kodak Brownie, and I was fascinated by the idea that you can take a moment in time and have it last for years. And you mentioned Katia Brisson, uh, one of the top uh, critics for the Providence Journal, when they really had critics. And, uh, and when I showed this picture, these two pictures, this one here and this one here, and an Imago show, and this, is, this was taken outside of uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York at least 30 years ago, maybe 40 years ago. And he said that reminded him that spontaneity of that moment. He says that reminds me of Katia Brisson. Wow. When I started to go to school, I started to develop a lot of uh, hostility uh, towards the teachers and being in class. Um, and I, I really didn't know what it was, and my mother and father didn't know, and it was probably dyslexia. And they just thought I was lazy, and they, they just felt that I didn't want to do my homework, or they, I didn't want to respond in class. And, and I, I really thought I had some problems. They just felt they couldn't handle it themselves and decided that I should be put in a private school away from home from the time I was about eight years old. I was down in New York, so I didn't see my mother and father for many, many months. And I remember very early on that somehow photography seemed to be an answer for me that other things were not. So I felt that if I was a success in photography, I didn't have to be constantly worried about my marks. Here's a picture I took at Cape, you know, uh, in, in Med the Mediterranean, just as, it, as you enter the Mediterranean in, at, uh, at, with Spain. This is Spain and over across... Uh, I've got pictures from all over the world. And, uh, and, yet, and yet, some of the pictures come from right in my backyard, or somebody's backyard. <laughs> and it just never ends, the, the kind of things that I, I, I never know what I'm going to see. And I finally built my first darkroom when I was about 20 years old, and I started to learn the process of being able to take a picture and bringing it into the old dark room with the chemicals and the paper and seeing an image come out of a plain piece of paper was an amazing thing the first time it happened and I never forgot that and I've been amazed all the years since as the years went by and many thousands and thousands of pictures I advanced into the digital age. I didn't have the problem that some of my friends had. They felt that the change from the old darkroom to digital was very confusing and very hard to make. And I, I thankfully was able to make that transition. And I never looked back and I've never taken another picture that I had to develop in the darkroom. As you can see, I couldn't make that wave hit that rock exactly that way. The only way I could do it is stand there for probably an hour 
and taking many pictures of the of the waves coming in and out and a splash and maybe out of 20 or 30 pictures one or two will come out the way I want for the for the what I saw there's no excuse for not taking multiple pictures you're out there and you see something that's worth taking a picture try to take a picture from different angles at different times of the day the same picture you might go back the next day and the next day and one day there might be clouds and one day they they might not be any clouds and those things make all the difference in the world in the final product and one of those pictures out of maybe 20 will turn out to be a winner it's impossible to know when you take one picture whether that one picture is going to wind up as something that you're satisfied with some of the most famous photographers in the world take many 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 pictures and the only ones that you see are the ones that go into the gallery use your eye to be able to see things photography is not just in the camera and in the dark room or with technical equipment it's developing your eye to be able to see things that you would have ordinarily walked by that's when you start to become a really good photographer when you start noticing what's out there in the world and there's thousands and thousands of images have yet to be taken by thousands of people who have the vision to be able to stop and take the time to look and look and look. Any other shortcuts will never satisfy you. And finally, I got to the point where I thought it was good enough that I started entering my work in shows. And uh, that was a, an eye-opener. You never knew what they were looking for, and so you just had to go by your own instincts as to what you thought that you liked, what you saw in an image that turned you on and made you want to take that image and turn it into a photograph that you could put in a frame and enter in a show. I stuck to my own vision of what photography was, and I'm happy I did, because I feel that what I have accomplished, I've worked hard for, I look back, and it's one of the finest times in my life has been spent looking for that image, finding that image, and being able to reproduce it into a fine photograph. And whether I win a prize or not, or whether I sell another picture, I'm still turned on by something new, something I've never seen before. It seems like it's endless. Uh, some people, they tell me, oh, I've run out of images. And I tell them, that's impossible. You just have to keep looking. And that's what I've done. I've continued to look. And every once in a while I find something that amazes me. And I continue and I hope to do more. At 94 years old, I still think there are images out there that I haven't captured yet. Thank you.